Next is I'm going to start taking down all of the uh, scaffolding system and bracing, bracing and scaffolding system, the zonts, zuckles, and zaps. I'm gonna take these off. I'm gonna leave, these are called the zuckles. They have the uh, kind of like knuckle, they've got the adjustment on them. So I'm gonna keep those on it, take all that down. My plan was and still kind of is to use this system in conjunction with the plumb wall system so that I can really get in the tight spaces. That's kind of where this system shines is it's more compact and adjustable with, you know, you can put these whatever level you need them. So my plan is since we've got so many corners to uh, put this in the back sides of where Chris dug out before the basement dig, I mean, before the basement pour, so we've got lots of extra support everywhere and get that done. But right now, what I've got to do is get this ready for backfill. And to do that, I've got to take all this down. Then I've got to come back and wherever I did the penetrations through the wall, I've got to go ahead and get that plumbed away from the wall. So we're not going to run through anything on that side except for the lights. So we didn't want any water underneath the other pool uh, just because I won't be able to get back to it if there's a problem. So we're going to come around, come around, get into this area. There's the three inch uh, pipes for the drains. Come up and basically get into this area. I'm going to dig this back uh, a little bit more and have an area because this will ultimately make the turn here and go up there where the equipment room is going to be. Uh, Chris needs to take the 220 to another job. So we're going to try and have this ready like Wednesday. They've already been rolling in with more number 57 and number four stone today. I got 12 more truckloads of that. So that's, uh, uh, that's another eight grand in stone, something like that. Cause we're going to backfill this all up to about where the wall plank is right there. We're going to backfill to there. All that will already be over here. And then I'll plumb the returns and the rest of that that's from there up. And then we'll just finish backfilling that with either the uh, skid steer or the tractor. And over here, we're going to backfill out to right in along this line in this area. And then start putting dirt because, I mean, it just would get unbelievably ridiculous to fill all that up with gravel. And then, like we talked about, Chris is going to uh, dig this down, roll in some clay. But uh, that little pump is kept up. I've got all the parts to do that in hard pipes. Once we get it up to a regular level, I'll pull the pump out, put hard pipe on it. Ultimately, that's just going to stay there, and I'll have a cover on it and everything. And we'll just see uh, see how much we really need it, though, once uh, Chris does his magic over here. Then we'll pull all the inside forms off. I could go ahead and pull those off as well, but that's not... It's priority for me right now as this is. So we'll get all this off, cut those back, and then James gets to do a lot of grinding and filling. He likes doing body work, so that'll be perfect. So that'll be a whole other video series on how all this gets done and finished out. Right now we're doing eco finish. There's another option, uh, but honestly, I haven't heard back from him yet, so I don't know if I'm gonna do it. So we'll go into how that gets done, but that will be done when both pools are ready. So no reason to come out and do the machine and then do the other one, so.
All right, well, that made quite the mess. <laughs> so the Zots and Zuckles and Zats all come with their own uh, metal cases. So I'll bring those down tomorrow and sort them. And like I said, I probably won't even put them all the way back up because we'll need them up here. That's all the wood from the scaffolding, and we reuse that. So I'm going to bring the tractor down with the forks, put some uh, plywood under it, and stack all that stuff on it. In fact, I've got a bunch of, uh, I have a bunch of pallets. I have a bunch of pallets, so now I'll put them on a pallet. That'll make it easier to move and get all this cleaned up. But it's uh, Taco Thursday. So uh, I'm going to eat and call it a day. In the last video, when Aaron was over here and he had to push the hose out real quick and he dumped some of it on the arm, the guy down below and everything, this is what he was seeing. It was starting to bulge there because this area, when we formed it up, this is where it did that little step up. And I had put all the bracing on here and we talked about putting a board there, which we did to, uh, cover up that space under the form but because I'd put the where I'd put the brace and everything it ended up being not ideal so you know it's one of those things you're learning that's why I put it on here so if you're out there this is this is for the people who want to do this stuff themselves too you know if if you want to write checks and you got people that can that'll come in and do whatever and you're happy to rhyme that that's great for you so that's the reason I do this is kind of to show some of the mishaps too, so you can avoid those. Uh, now I know, and it's obvious after the fact, but I know, you know there should be a lot of strapping there before I put the bracing on. So I've got to go along. Uh, Marshall would put screws into there, and I didn't take those out before I took scaffolding. Fine, I'll get them from the top, get that down. Then this side will be clear, and then finish getting the rest of that off tomorrow. I believe. Uh, Tater, Donnie, and Jeff are supposed to be coming tomorrow. I'm getting ready to check with them. If they are, then they'll help me get all this cleaned up and organized. Like I said, get the rest of that tomorrow. All the rock grew because we need a bunch. So we just go ahead and get it in like, like I said earlier, I was getting a bunch. So bunch has arrived. So we got everything we need to do our backfill because over here, between there and there, all that's got to get filled because we're putting the pool over top of that. So all that will have to be filled. The rest of it, we're going to backfill, but we're going to also use some dirt at, after we get a couple feet away. But over here, we're going to, uh, yeah, do a lot there. So that'll be nice. The uh, pond is clearing up the more the uh, aerators run. There will be a video on that coming out with, so it's looking better and better as expected. Uh, Daniel Living Water Aeration has really been helping me out. Got some more stuff on the way and uh, more will be happening with that. The trees are really coming up. Those are brand new. Of course, the one on the island is getting huge. I had it in another video. Uh, I'll mow some out here. I might mow some more tonight really about the only time I've got to mow. So the next day brought some help. Got Tater and Donnie out here. So you already saw, got the other side off. So they're gonna organize that. We're gonna kind of keep it close so that we're not moving things 40 times because we're gonna need it on either the upper pool well we will need on the upper pool but uh we're also going to need take some and use on corners and things up there on the basement so i'm gonna come through today and finish taking off all the scaffolding toss it to the sides they're going to organize it we're going to put the zonts zuckles and zats back in their metal cases they come with you see those up near the tractor so we're going to do that and just have this all, uh, I said, off like we need it to be so we can backfill and a little organized. Then depending on what time it is, I may go ahead and do the, uh, uh, the electrical conduit uh, for the lights because those are the only things down low. I'm not going to do the upper plumbing until after we backfilled up to about the level of this little shelf here. Uh, once we're backfilled to there, then I'm going to do the upper plumbing and get that done. Then we'll backfill it the rest of the way. Finally, yay, we will be able to uh, walk back around this area. 
and we'll do something with that. So that's what's happening today. There you go. Let's get to it.
All right, it's the next day, and wow, is it a beautiful one. You can't ask for better weather to work outside in than this right here. I mean, it's just amazing. So, as you saw, uh, we got everything, all the scaffolding take down. I got those, that little row of two by fours to take off, but as that gets back filled, I'll grab that off. But we got everything off. Uh, Tater and Donnie got all the inside forms off. We got everything moved out of here, which is where the next pool goes. So we moved it up here. I didn't want to put it too far because we're going to need it again. So it seemed like a good spot to put it. And let me show you how uh, the inside all turned out. So still need to come in here and vac up. But there were really only two spots that I... That didn't turn out great. And it's right here. We got some honeycombing at the top. And just uh, obviously missed that with the vibrator. What that looks like. But not the end of the world. We got that to take care of. Uh, but got some grinding work to do. And the other spot is over there under, directly under that skimmer. But it's not really honeycombed. It's just not as consolidated as I would like. But not really worried about that either. Lots of body work to do, as we call it. So James will love that. That's his thing. Uh, some people had pointed out, I think these couldn't see them, is those are the three drains. So those are the floor drains on the bottom. Yes, they're close together because it doesn't matter in this case. Only one of them, one drain does the circulation for the filtering of the bottom pool. The other two, their only job is to pull water out of here and pump it into the upper pool for the waterfall. That's where those are. That was the, uh, made sense because all of this is pretty tight, but that way we went out and went up and that's them there. So I'm gonna stick some more pipe up, but I won't do my 90 until Chris has done some of the backfilling. All the piping is gonna come through this channel right here. Ultimately, make a 90 and turn back to where the equipment room's going. All the plumb pipe plumbing is gonna wrap around, come around and boom through here and stop and wait. Those are two returns. This, uh, there was a couple comments about the returns and returns on the steps. Well, we did them in the steps. You just didn't really see them because we had so much going on. You didn't see they were there. So our returns in the steps. So there you go. So you come in here, you do a little bit of grinding or you being James in this case. So you do have some grind work and stuff to do a little bit and see how that turned out with the smooth corners. There's a little bit. Then there's an epoxy that fills these holes. Then we will roll on the eco finish and a flamethrower comes in and kind of melts it into this nice finish that uh, you won't see the other option, which I did consider and haven't actually totally discounted yet. The other option is I could tile the whole thing. I did put Zypex in all this. These, and Joy's working on another option for this. So that was the fast foot that, you know, let's do the monopore. So I'm gonna come in here, cut that out, and then that gets filled. He's working on an option where that won't be an issue that those will be able to release, but don't have that yet. Not bad for our first, uh, for my first time. You know what, this gives me some really good training and insight into what to do for the, uh, what to do for the, for the house to just make sure that, you know, like I'll have, uh, I'll have more guys on the bottom vibrating on the inside of the walls, so you can do some of that. So we'll do more of that on the house pour. This is also dryer mix. So this was a four because of doing the of doing the mono pour. But on the house, it'll be a, a six slump. So it'll be a little wetter and flow more too. So yeah, lots of little stuff to do. Yay me. So time to get busy and uh, make it happen. All right, let me show you how this is supposed to work. 
see what happens. So we ran two inch pipe for every penetration, except for the floor drains, even for the lights and everything, because there's an adapter we can use with the micro bites and it just makes sense. So what we do on this end is two inch coupling. I put one in there. Two inch coupling with a two to one inch adapter. Okay. And then your electrical conduit. Let me make sure I'm getting a good view of that. Ta -da! So I'm going to go ahead and glue all this up up here. So the wiring that's needed for this is really small. So we could have done something like half for three quarters. Easier just to reduce down to one inch. Also, one inch, you know, gives us some room to actually pull through and all that stuff. And in this case, there's not a whole lot more money. You know, once you go up to the larger sizes, it becomes more of an issue, but we'll get all that run. Ultimately, with the electrical, you have to be higher than the water level so that if the pipe that the electrical's in did have a leak, you wouldn't have water pouring back into your electrical panel, which, you know, would be a problem. So it has to be above the water level, which we will be easily for the lower pool. For the upper pool, how they solve that is you run everything into a little box that's above water level, and then you come out of that into your uh, pump room so that, you know, like I said, so that everything's kind of... At my other place when we did that, we kind of hid those little things in like flower planting boxes, stuff like that, and then we just had a uh, one main one that ran, ran back. Uh, yeah, so that's what we'll do with that, and I uh, guess I better get to work probably make fun of me wearing gloves but i don't like purple stuff on my hands and i'm not as uh i'm not as good as you professional plumbers at uh keeping that stuff off of me so we'll see how much is on the gloves at the end how about that hey found another use for the fab form cans probably to create a blinding light onto our video We'll see if that really happens. Yay. All right, so those are on. I did end up deciding to go ahead and turn them up some because I want them all to end up coming across with this one and sticking out here. The only ones I haven't done yet, I haven't done this side because it's really tight. And I'm gonna get all muddy, which is fine. But I'm going down the street to show a lot on the 90 acres. And uh, a lot of people have asked me about an update on that. So either I've already done the, I'm, while I'm there, I'm gonna film, I'm not gonna put it in this video. I'm gonna film an update. So if I've already put it out, I'll link it here. If not, then it's coming after this one. And if you're new to the channel and you don't know what the 90 acre project is, it's 90 acres that I 
purchase at the end of the year and Chris and I went out there and really checked it out I divided it into a few lots but I kept them big lots not little tiny home lots but actual decent lots so uh, I said if you want to check that out then I will link that and uh, yeah so next is to get down behind that wall do those two and then take the one inch conduit i've got get it ran and there's some things i gotta pick up at homie depot